those days. We're already there. <laughs> if you've ever wanted to step forward and reinvent yourself, or at least try something new, then do we have the Step Forward Into the Unknown show for you. <laughs> Today we'll talk about trying new things, experimenting in life, and being willing or not to fall through the ice. Oh boy. Oh no. No, no. We have not done such thing. That plus we'll talk about Jessica back on camera, Rue takeout windows, skates for no ice, seeking new cars, greasy ovens, PowerPoint innovations, Hawaii bound, loving struggle go, assembling bassinets, Chinese New Year, are you serious? And what in the world filming chainsaws and barking has to do with anything. What? <laughs> so welcome back to the show, CJ. <laughs> It's actually going to be quite calm, but wow, what an intro. Are you ready to shine? I think so. I am ready to shine, Michael. It's six in the morning, but I am shining Thank and sparkling. Thank you for doing it so early today because we get to go from here for uh, some sort of OB appointment for Jessica. All is all is great. Yeah. We, we The big appointment is in two weeks, so everybody please send prayers for Ooh. baby Hannah's heart. Um, because that determines whether she might need a procedure and whether we get to stay in our new home or move again for a month. <laughs> oh, wait. Like, so if you go to the doctor and they say, uh, yeah, you better hang around here because, you know, we may need to go in and. and then we then we do it. Well, then we would deliver. deliver in Philly and we would rent a uh, I'm guessing an Airbnb for I don't know what kind of window, two to four weeks in Philly while we have this home here. <laughs> and and we get to buy a home or um, rent a longer term home at the end of June in the middle of this, our minds can't actually, okay, I'm probably confusing people here. Baby Hannah had a temporary heart condition that will either take care of itself naturally or need a, a balloon catheter procedure to expand the walls of her heart so that the valve will move freely. But it's, they, they say it's a pretty much 100% success ratio. Good. Awesome. If she needs that, we will get to deliver not here in New Jersey, where we rented a home to stay close uh, to current care, but we would have to rent a home in Philadelphia for delivery time. The home that we rented here on a lakeside so we could relax, stay close to medical care, and chill um, through the end of June when the owners come back to this home. And we want to purchase a, a home in New England as well. Um, we would have to keep renting this home, rent a second home in Philly, then come back here and then pack up and go to somewhere. The event horizon, meaning the point which we can't see past, where nobody can see past, our event horizon is February 18th. That's the day that we have the uh, EKG, the echocardiogram, because it's son uh, it's it's sonar or ultrasound when the baby is is uh, inside of the mama. Um, that's February 18th. We don't know whether we're going to be in Philly or here after that, and so it's made it more challenging mentally to actually think several steps ahead to where are we going to be after June. Right, because yeah, cause the baby is due in April. So well, it's technically due May. Uh, it was a May 28th birth date. Oh, wow. So because of the procedure, uh, it moves it up about three weeks. So that's a May 7th. Due oh, May date. 7th. Okay, got it. I just remember it was a Taurus baby. It's supposed to be a Gemini. It's oh, a, Gemini? Oh, okay. It might be Taurus now. And it just means so many unknowns. And it's hard to leap past. We get to. Leap past all of these unknowns to say, where do you want to be in July? Mm -hmm. Because no matter what, we get to be somewhere. In July. <laughs> in July with a beautiful, healthy baby. We yeah. would, of course, prefer baby Hannah to have a local delivery and not need a procedure. None of it in our hands. Yeah. None of it in our hands, even slightly. That planning aspect of me goes like, well, July through September, New England is super popular. Maybe book something on Airbnb, and you can can't with the with the generous cancellation policy. Therefore, you have something during that time. It's possible that may be the thing to do. And and you're right, we do get to get on that early. <laughs> very good point. It will be very popular there. Oh gosh, 
So oh, and I'm glad you said that because that will give me impetus to look into that because I have that planner Virgo side of me uh, as as well. And I want to dot all my I's and cross my T's. And I think honestly, between you and me, my nervous system has been a little shot lately because there are so many sub processes going on trying to figure out. I think I finally over the last day or two been able to let go of a lot of it. But there's so many pieces that I want to understand and have some illusion of control over. <laughs> you know, I was, I, um, so I was editing um, our last couple shows. And like I said, the sound didn't come out at all. I have no idea because I've been traipsing through. I'm like, it's on Final Cut Pro. It's, I'm like, where did it go? Anyways, um, I was looking at the titles. And for the last, like, maybe 10 episodes, it's like, Deal with the unknown. Find the uncertain. Absolutely. <laughs> just, that has been the theme. But it's, um, it's not just our theme. It's not just your theme. I mean, I'm I'm contributing com commentary <laughs> and feeling the same experiences too. I think that's the that is the name of the game is to surrender, let go, let go, let go, and uh, it's hard to do. So I you know, plan. And then I guess, like you said, just know that it all could just get thrown up in the air and get destroyed. It's just Every how it works. We planned on going has fallen through the ice, so to speak. And, and on that note, now there's been no falling through the ice. Good. Everything's been good and safe. I got to order. I found, uh, from a company called Nordic skater. They seem awesome. I want to support them. I found lake ice blades, uh, ice blades mm. for lakes that will go through choppy ice and will go through snowy ice. And so you can use on, obviously, lake ice is not, unless you had a Zamboni out on the lake. Yeah, it's not it's smooth. Not a, yeah. So I found these blades. I found everything. I got it ordered. It was total flow and getting things ordered. They arrived a day and a half ago, right in time for this rainstorm and warm up. Oh. And the ice is going away. No. <laughs> no. And that's the, that's the <laughs> theme right now. As you go, all right. I'm going for it with the best information I have, and then it eviscerates right before you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't be laughing. That's really hard. I'm sorry. Th it this... is. No. It's just that's – but this is 2022 for all of us. Mm. There is nobody who said it went according to plan. Yet you're still seeking a new car. Um so, <laughs> So. Well, well, we've got the we've got the biggest truck in the world. That's probably not ideal as the family vehicle. The Tesla Model Three, from what we understand about the accoutrements that you want to take with you with a baby, it's small, particularly if you have baby and a rooster. Yeah. You're not putting baby next to rooster because if the rooster crows, <laughs> you want him at least a row away. <laughs> you know, most people yes, don't have to worry about family, that, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not not a lot of people have to worry about like. The rooster and the baby being in the same, like, because the baby, when the baby sleeps, it's just like, you don't want any noises whatsoever. We're, we're going on a different philosophy. Yeah. We, we uh, Somebody recently shared a different philosophy, yes. which is make all the noise you can around the baby so that the baby gets used to the noise. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to test this one out. I can hear a lot of a lot of women and parents going, oh, boy. <laughs> sure you are, Michael. Well, okay, maybe what you could do is start having a rooster crowing all the time. Just put it next to Jessica's stomach, and they're just like, go, go, go. And then the baby's going to be like, I, I like this. It makes me feel well, he, calm. She does. She does on the other side because I speak to her in automatic writing. She does like it. She, the word she uses is he's a hoot. So she does like it, and he has been really quiet in the new house. Until this morning. Oh. And this morning he has just <laughs> fallen apart. And I'm not oh. sure. Yesterday wasn't that good. That was the start of the storm. Birds are very uh, sensitive to weather. Oh, because they I need to, they're, uh, they've got to keep themselves safe. And so when a weather system comes in, he tends to fall apart wow. to protect himself and the flock. And today is the second day of this weather front. And, and so that might be why So he's... it could be any weather event. And he's like getting prepared for something. Well, if, if it's just a, you know, calm weather coming in, he's calm. But if it's a low pressure system where there's a change and there's going to be wind or rain or snow, or even a thunderstorm is rolling away around in the distance, uh, he's looking for his flock, wanting to, 
to, to, to get everybody to huddle together and bring them indoors, so to speak. That is super cute and really frustrating. So what was happening this morning? Oh, we, we got them up and from the minute we, we brought him downstairs and we put him down, instead of him going for his food, he started screaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's like a, a toddler having a tantrum and we love him very dearly but he was just un, in, inconsolable no poor thing <laughs> but i thought you said he woke you up no Did he... no oh, okay he, he just got up, up. we he's... always get up before him um okay that's interesting that you're like wake that is hilarious because usually the rooster near us like wakes us up before we mm. are awake but i love how you wake the rooster up <laughs> <laughs> so we have to be very quiet. Now, I don't get up as early as I did last year. Ever since, I don't know if it was the pregnancy or this fall, I have, I, I get up before seven, but not much. Yeah. Um, I mean, I used to get up really early. Like and at that, four, right? You used to yeah. get up at four. Um, and I love that. But I mean, like last night, I had a show till 1030 at night and oh. it's to get up back again at four. Although I must say. Jessica got on air last night. Oh, exciting. That mean, was like, the first she, was she, pregnancy. So she joined the show and what was It was the... a live YouTube event yeah. and she asked me the questions. Oh, so exciting. So she emceed. It was kind of cool. Very so cool. She was sitting next to me. I'm sitting where I am. And then behind both of us uh, uh, <laughs> is Rue because <laughs> he's the co-star <laughs> on YouTube at this point <laughs> and he knows it. <laughs> He's like getting ready. He's like, how's my, how's my hair look? <laughs> or what my feathers look? <laughs> oh my God. Okay. How, You'll have to check how, it out. If you're did, listening to this, you got to check it out on YouTube. Okay. How did, Jess, how did Jessica up. like it? Because it's been a while. It's been maybe a couple of years, right? Yeah. Well, it's been a long time since she's been in an air like that. And definitely nothing like this uh, since the pregnancy started. About halfway through, she got tired. And, and she's like, do you want to keep going? Do you want to stop? And somehow we got to the magic understanding that she's okay if we keep going, if she can just kind of kick back so that she doesn't have to stay upright with the baby in the belly and just relax into it. Yeah. And, and then it was totally fine. So she was she like lying on your couch asking you questions? No, just Michael, the tell chair, them about this. <laughs> and, and, then, and then just headed off to take care of her needs. And then I, I went on my own, but she had made her appearance. It was beautiful. And, and everybody loved seeing her. Aww. Okay. I, I was thinking about you this morning and wondering how your, how your transmissions are going. I mean, cause I, I told you how I had like my virgin transmission in front of a group and how awkward and weird and vulnerable it felt. And how are you doing with all of that? Well, the channeling or that sort of thing, whatever we call it, has gone to a new level as long as I give it a minute or two, meaning I need to take a little bit of space for it to come through. But it's coming through loud and clear. Miraku comes through every single day. She's our, our baby that transitioned back to the other side temporarily. She comes through every day. Um, somebody asked a question last night. I, I don't need to go there for our show today, but asked a question about fallen angels last night uh, on our on our show. And it was and it kind of had you know, the, the, the intonations of, of old school Christianity and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And this morning I go into automatic writing and, and I got like a half an hour, I don't know, four, five, six, maybe 10 pages about what does this really mean? What does this really look like? And civilizations and advancement of, of, wow. of, of beingness. And, and it was really, really cool. So it's still there waiting if I just take the time to access it. The biggest thing is that, like, my uh, mentor, Jack, who was my best man at 89 years young, and he, he transitioned almost a decade ago now, he came through a couple of days ago just to help me reset my nervous system. Oh, no. Because it is such a heightened state of alert with everything going on. And I, mm -hmm. I think we're getting there. Um but that's been the primary concern of the angels is how we get you in a, it's going to be all right. It's all going to be all right. And honestly, part of it may be losing a child within the last couple months that my fear, yeah, I'm about to cry. So even though I've done some healing work on it, the fear level is higher because in that case, your worst case scenario did come true mm. so we're getting there but the channelings are going great 
Yeah. They are. The angels are there, and I love it. And my soul growth is uh, huge. Yeah. No. Wow. Yeah, I... I you're... Um, so um, much a beacon of light that even in the be with a beacon of light, you know, there's hardship, right? It doesn't mean that there is not hardship. And you're so much a beacon of light for everyone that I, like, I, 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 I and I know that Miraku has passed, but there's not like a, yeah, that's only been a month ago. Like, you're still grieving. Like, I, I it just didn't even hit me until just now how there's probably a lot of grief and then kind of pre-anticipatory kind of fear, you know, I don't know what could happen. Well, yeah. You go every time you go to the OB, all of a sudden your stomach flutters. Oh. You think about the next appointment and yes, it's not what you think about you bring about, but you want to bring the highest level energy you can. But the reality is between week uh, 14 and 16, I think it was everything went cattywampus mm -hmm. in the pregnancy. I hear a correction. Everything went exactly as it was supposed to <laughs> by a divine plan, <laughs> not by our plan. Yeah. And so you get nervous. You get scared. You can't think past, well, I don't know what's going to happen. So the guides had told me very clearly, they had told me before we even hit week 12, there's no point in planning where you're going. I still wanted to. They said everything's going to change after an ultrasound. It didn't come about at the 12 week ultrasound, came about at the 16 week. As we're driving to the 16 week, I think it was the 16 week ultrasound, I was scared out of my mind. Mm -hmm. I was so worried and I'm like, I don't even know why I'm so scared, I'm so scared, I'm so scared, I'm so scared. That's not my natural state of being, although it has been a little bit lately. Um, and that's where we got you know, taken by the, the, the technician, uh, to meet this this new OB who takes us down to her office, like going into the principal's office, closes the door, and that's when crap went down. Mm. And so that's still, it's not that I don't have faith and trust in the universe. It's just what I want to hold on to <laughs> has not been the case. I've been reading this book by um, Gabriel Cousins. It's called The Biology of Kundalini or something like that, or The Spiritual Light. I can't remember what it's called. Anyways, it's a book that I'm just reading personally, not for my show. And um, he was saying that um, he's gone through this, like, incredible enlightenment process. And he was saying um, he was recounting a story by Maharishi. I can't remember who it was, but <clears throat> he was saying that, um, even when we've done like the deepest level of awakening, we're still human. And so we still have these fears and, and our ego just doesn't like poop go away. Like this whole idea of like, get rid of the ego, you know, eradicate. The, it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. It's still there. And he recounts in his book, the story of Maharishi just one day crying like for three days. And he or cry meeting him one day and he's crying for three days and he was crying for about how we just can never let go of those things. It's just even as, as enlightened as this man was, he just, yeah. you know, so th th there's still going to be these imprints, right? Imprints that you have that. And it's, it's wired, you know, go to, go to a Bruce uh, Lipton biology of belief, go to a Rick hand, uh, Hansen and Hardwired for Happiness and any any of these guys, you have a nervous system that defaults to keeping you safe, mm -hmm. which is great. Keeps you from getting eaten by the tiger. These are real deal safety concerns that all of us have. And so to say, oh, I don't have any fear. I just live in trust and love and light. I'm not there yet. <laughs> I think shit, even people... Excuse me, shit went down. <laughs> even people who are there who feel mostly stabilized in bliss, happiness, and joy, like, they're not there yet. I don't... I think if we were there, we wouldn't really be human. Mm -hmm. And so even just letting go of of that and, and um, I don't know, being equanimous, which is incredibly hard <coughs> during these hard times... Yeah, um, I was, um, 
yesterday. I, I've been doing these every Thursday mornings. Um, I met this woman and and I was like overjoyed. I think I told you about her last week where I'm learning how to tune in in a very different way. And, um, and it's just being with your body and feeling the sensations of it. And um, really getting attuned with your sensations of your body and um, speaking from that place of presence in that place of presence in in what's happening present at the present moment what is happening with my body and it is just shocking the if you dig and you know you kind of breathe in you go deeper you go deeper you go deeper and it's um shocking at the um stuff that is unveiled like I, the other day i I was I was like feeling problems with my ankles and my knees and she, and she was saying that's usually struggle. So what is it that you're struggling with? And I said I don't, you know, I don't know. And then I she said just tune in, tune in, tune in and it was um in my heart there was just mm-hmm. this incredible pain and it radiated to my stomach down to me. Anyways, um when I tuned into it it was my mom. And when she, when I was little, she used to have a ruler, like, you know, those yardsticks and they were like wooden yardsticks. She used to hit me with those rulers, that ruler on my hand or on my butt. She would just strike me when I was quote unquote bad. Because during that time, this was like the parenting advice during that time. And I... Just post that time, my mom read a book that would lead to who knows how many fun experiences called Tough Love. Yeah, that was, that was the time. <laughs> it was a tough. It, it, that it was a ruler or belt. Like those are of of our generation. This is tough what love. That was, this was parenting advice, right? It's called Tough Love. Is that the name of the book? <clears throat> so my mom would hit me when I was bad, and um, and then that younger version of me came up like, "What did I do wrong? What?" It, I don't understand who you want me to be. Why can't I just be myself? And all of those things just came tumbling out and just the anger and frustration and rage from someone just hitting me for some unknown reason. And it's, it's just amazing because as, 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 um, I was reading Bradley, um, uh, Dr. Bradley, what's his last name? Dr. Bradley Nelson. <clears throat> Nelson, who and, you... And off the record, please just have me do it before I go after this. Okay. Although I've got to run for the OB after this, but let's get you guys yeah. connected. Yeah, so I uh, remember you loving the emotion code stuff, so I thought, okay, I'm going to get this book because I want to figure out ways of like processing this stuff. And he talks about magnets and all these different things. But um, uh, uh, I was reading that book, and, and it's just amazing because, you know, from age zero to probably seven or 12, depending on what book you read. I mean, all that stuff is recorded in your body. And so I was shocked at the kinds of stuff that has been unearthed. And in my meditation class, my teacher yesterday brought up such a wonderful way of thinking about this because it's really hard when you go through the pain and you're yelling. For me, it it sounds like yelling, screaming, vituperatives, F-bombs. Like it's just just not a pleasant, it's like a Carrie incident, you know, from that movie Carrie. Wow. (laughs) It's not (laughs) pretty. We all have it inside of us. We all do. Exactly. It's not pretty. And, um, And he said, you know, there are people who or people in power who who see that they have the world in their hands and their smallest of motions control the world, like Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, are people who literally with, you know, they, they believe that they have the world at their in their hands and they do have the world in their hands. And, and what if we thought that we had the world in our hands? So when I'm healing that I'm healing the world. So I'm feeling pain with my mom, but what if when I'm going in there, I I think I'm healing my pain with my mother and I'm healing the world's pain with my mother. I go in thinking I'm healing future generations of my family and that's enough for me to feel. But even if you kind of think, so if you start creating a reality that we're so powerful and we don't play small that we... We, and when we go in and meditate, when you go in and do the transmissions and the automatic writing, like you're healing the world. Just the having that writing come out of you from awareness into the world 
And when you do your your um, channeling, it's like healing the world. And it may be just, it's like, oh, no, I'm just healing the people that are there. No. And, and, and you could say those people multiply out to whatever. No, you're actually just getting that idea out there is building this new reality in the astral plane. And once that reality starts getting invested in, created, healed, then that's how we create a new world. And I thought, oh, that is just so inspiring. So I'm sharing it in case it's inspiring to you. And maybe you're already probably doing it. But for me, it was like, a, oh, wow, I never thought of it this way. And I love it. All the work we do on ourselves. And I do a lot of work uh, similar to Dr. Bradley Nelson's, and, and he's, he's the man. He's a dear, dear friend, and I recommend everybody get his book. Everybody attend one of his programs. Everyone, everyone, everyone. Uh, the clearing work you do on yourself, no matter what the modality, no matter what the technique, it helps your frequency raise up and raise up and raise up. It's getting a you know 400-pound gorilla off you here, another one off of you there. But what we we often forget, or or don't visualize um, is that um, humanity is a song. Humanity is, is a frequency of us all singing together. As you heal yourself, your vibration goes up, your song lifts higher, and it affects the entire song of everyone in around you because we all come into some state of harmony. Even though it feels like a cacophony, there's always a harmony. And so as you heal yourself, you're helping the entire piece of music. Mm -hmm. As somebody else heals themselves, it helps. So it all matters. Every note matters. You get in a room, if everybody's singing a low note, you're going to end up singing that low note. As soon as people start to come up, others get brave and they start to come up as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, there's a beautiful passage in his book about tuning forks. And tuning forks have like 125 megahertz or 512. And I think I read this correctly, that if you have a bunch of tuning forks and you bing, you know, you have a high frequency thing, it will start vibrating. I think all the tuning forks at that same level. But I don't know what I couldn't tell from his writing of the book, what it does for the tuning forks that are the ad, like, you know, if it's 512 and you're getting to 112 or 125, does that vibrate those lower tuning forks or not? I know that he said it vibrates all the ones at 512. So they're all vibrating. So if you have like one high frequency tuning fork mm -hmm. triggering off another high frequency tuning fork and they're all vibrating at a higher level, it's got to bring the other ones up. They may not be vibrating, but like, so if you and I are meditating, we're in yep. two different time space, you know, locations, but because we're connected and we're both meditating, like we're in some ways a song hall, right? This, everyone listening is a song hall, a group. When we're increasing our vibration and all the audience is increasing our vibration, it's helping create this field of presence that is just much higher than yes. the other. So I, I I don't know. I just love this stuff. I was very excited after reading his book because I think I understand the idea of transmission better. So like when you're channeling at these high levels of vibration, you're bringing everyone up to that higher vibration. It's just, I don't know. I'm excited. I'm excited about where this is going to go. We, we've been doing a lot of uh, teaching lately on prayer. Mm. And I'm going to give you a, a, the briefest thing from a, from a transmission that I got recently, which which was called the rope and the room or the umbilical cord and the womb. Mm. And it goes like this. As you pray to spirit and prayer can be literally reaching out with a prayer. It can be doing automatic writing or anything of that sort. When you go to commune with spirit, it is like having a rope between you or the old tin cup telephone mm -hmm. with the string between you. And as you reach up, a vibration reaches down and your frequency goes up. Mm -hmm. Just the very act of, of reaching out to spirit, a rope comes down and starts to pull you up. Mm -hmm. The more time that you spend, that's the rope, or you can say the umbilical cord, it's feeding you, it's feeding your soul. As you spend more time in this environment, you're kind of welcomed into the room of spirit or the womb of spirit mm -hmm. and now your frequency goes to a whole new level because you are surrounded by such a higher level energy mm -hmm. so you pray once you pray twice you feel a little bit better a little bit better and and it's it's attuning you to a new frequency 
but you get into this state of prayer and start to live more from a state of prayer and it's very logarithmic or compounding you mm -hmm. find yourself at that much much higher level yeah i was in in this letting go of struggles te uh, technique that i was doing or i don't know process that i was doing yesterday at the very tail end um what i loved about what she said was that it's always right there you know this whole idea it's like um we need prayer, we need meditation, we need to be in, in, you know, whatever theta brain states for us to be able to like actually see that it's there, but it's always there. It's always right here. Love is the ground in which we all live. And when you finally get to the point of releasing enough tension, you can kind of, you are like, oh, it is like you can feel that it's just there all the time. But we forget, like, we need to have, like, a little, you know, a little tug by the umbilical cord to go, like, remember, this is here all the time. Reminders my are favorite helpful. Piece. Yeah. I've got these two rings on right now. This one little ring right here. I'm not oh. sure how well you can see yeah, it. Yeah, I can. The mag are they magnets? Is one a magnet? So, no, not magnets. One has, has stars and plant uh, stars and the moon and the sun on it, and that's representative of baby Hana. So I remember baby Hana at all time. And, and think of baby Hana. And the other one, and Miraku suggested I get this, is a ring with a, a white rabbit on it. Oh, sweet. Oh, where did you even find these rings? It, online. Online wow. I found them. And so you've got Miraku and Hana right next to each other. Oh. And you've got the white rabbit going down the rabbit hole. And she is there waiting. But yeah. they're reminders. Yeah. And so I'm literally wearing physical reminders. And it may take us to literally wear a physical reminder of a ring, of a bracelet, of, of a pendant, of a who knows what, to remind us spirit having an energetic experience in human form. Mm -hmm. And you remember that and you come back and you come back home and you come back home and you come back home. And the more you remember, hopefully, the faster you come back. I admit, the last couple of weeks, I've been a little bit of a scaredy cat. The nervous system through this process it's taken on some pretty heavy duty reminders. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're, I think that we also have to be reminded that we're still human. <laughs> you know, that's really what, and you know, you're, we're both, we're human and we're divine. And yeah. so we're going to have these ups and downs, um, all of us. I mean, if you'd see me the other day screaming and, and writhing in pain <laughs> and crying <laughs> and yelling, like, like Carrie, you'd be like, oh, <laughs> but you do it. But like, in some ways you're doing it for every person who's lost a baby. Yeah. You know, when you're going through this challenge in, in a very, um, awakened, high vibrational state, you're doing healing in yourself and you're healing every single person who's lost a baby at the same time, because, you know, I mean, it's, it's all, we're all connected. So, mm -hmm. I mean, how beautiful that you're doing this work and how painful, how utterly painful and devastatingly hard it is to do this work. I, it's, well, the good news is I don't have any choice. <laughs> 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 don't have to try to do the work. <laughs> the work has been presented to me. <laughs> so and if you're I, listening, the work has been presented to <laughs> you as well. So, so last week um, we did our present, we did our launch for our presentation for this um, this big eight week course that we're doing. And what was amazing is, um, I, did I tell you that we used Psyche, which is Bruce Lipton, is in association with Rob, this guy who just created Psyche. And so we used Psyche to do surrogate muscle testing for the group, to go into, I guess, awareness, su super conscious, and like tune into the group and what they wanted. And we're like, what does the group want? What do they need? How do we hold them in love? And, you know, yes, you can hold them in love, but what specific things? Are there certain people that we need to work with more and so we identified two people that needed help we found out later that those two people actually refused to participate at some aspect of the program but we didn't know that at the time wow. when we did this healing and then we did this healing for um these two people and one of them just like like broke open the group and helped the whole group open up into love it was just 
It's so amazing. The, so this is our PowerPoint innovation. So now I'm actually, when I go through PowerPoint, I muscle test and I say, do yeah. we need any changes for the group? Does the group need anything? I love it. What's the simplest way to say into the group? So that's my PowerPoint innovation. So it's, it's kind of exciting to tune in and like in a, it's a very different way of creating PowerPoints. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. And it's so fun. It makes it more fun. Very cool. So let's 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 finish up. I know there's sure. there's a little bit more I, I can discuss, but but I hear Rue waking up and I yes. know we get to go to the OB here shortly. So what's Hawaii bound? Oh well, I'm gonna go to Hawaii on the eighth for my birthday. So I'm Ooh. going to go visit my friends have a place and they're like, Hey, would you like to come? Invite both my husband and he's like, I've got a lot of work, so I can't he's catching up from work from our kids being home. So I'm gonna go solo with my two dearest friends and so I'll be in Hawaii from the 8th to the 13th so the next time we speak hopefully at 9 in the morning or 7 in the morning Hawaii time I'll be in Hawaii so you'll be able to see me there hello yes ah. I'm excited <laughs> I guess there is one last thing I want to mention which is yes. we've been trying again to do these uh, YouTube shorts which I tried last year didn't have success I think tried a second time didn't have success trying again to make these short little videos and I'm still running into challenges and difficulties. And yesterday I tried recording one or two days ago out on the ice and there are these people using giant saws, skill saws oh, or no. chainsaws on the edge of the ice. And, and, and then there's a barking dog. I still get to step forward. <laughs> what are they? We'll be waiting. You get to step forward. They're shorter videos. They're me on the mic by myself, giving a teaching of about, um, 12 to 30 minutes, somewhere Perfect. in there. Yeah, so you do a transmission of something that's exactly. coming up at the day. Beautiful. So, and, and, and I do I do have a, a, a mystic circle, a, 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 um, a place you can join on YouTube where I do really small things and people get behind the scenes in, uh, uh, goodness. But this is, this is to give a full teaching, but a, a, a short teaching. And it's been more challenging with setup, with logistics, with cameras, with microphones than I expected. And each time... I admittedly want to quit and say, I guess I'm not ready. And I get to step forward. And that, I think, is the theme right now for all of us, is you're going to feel it's messy, it's awful, I don't want to do it. <laughs> and we get to step forward. It's 2022. Yeah, I would say it's a final word is that when you step forward, you're helping everyone who is afraid of stepping forward to step forward. So your one step is all of our first steps, right? And it's Ooh. critical. Love it, love it, love it. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ show. Say be well, have fun. Man, it's just an interesting time. So love yourself up, step forward for everyone, but be okay if you end up like <laughs> Carrie and Stephen King. <laughs> And above, can't believe I said that, and above <laughs> and beyond all else, with, without the killing, everybody, and above <laughs> and beyond all else, shine bright. <laughs> Woo! Woo all right. Um, uh...